This is Mark Valley. I've got a new podcast called The Live Drop, where I visit the world of intelligence, espionage, surveillance, secrets, tradecraft. I'll talk with spies about their stories of international intrigue. Sometimes I'll even talk with the actors who play them as well. Check it out at markvalley.com. It's The Live Drop. This is Popping the Bubble with hosts Sandra Ponce de Leon and Pete A. Turner. Hi, I'm Vanessa Camones, CEO of Any Context, and we're here with Popping the Bubble. All right. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Sandra. Howdy. How are you? I'm doing good. Wonderful. You've done a great job so far. You're going to keep on doing great. It's I your second visit so. to the show. It is. I, I know. You know We're I'm so lucky. So excited about it. I was like, are you That's a special sure you want to honor. talk to me again? <laughs> yeah, is she our first, second time yeah. guest? Yeah, Look yeah, yeah. Am I really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So thank you twice. Look at yes, me with thank my you twice. points. Yes. Thank you twice. Well, we, in, we enjoyed so much our last conversation. We needed to have you back. You guys, you're mm. making me blush now, and I don't blush easily. I see you blushing. <laughs> <laughs> they say Peruvians don't blush. I know we don't, we right? Don't. It's because we're is brown. that a true thing? Is I think it? so. No. I, no? I, honestly, I think it is. Yes, like, well, I've never no. seen my Have mother you ever blush. Seen me blush. Yes, I've never yeah. seen my mother you, blush. I've seen you blush. Have you? Yes, I can't or tell you the father, time, but I, or my sister, or my brother, or my grandparents. Like actually, now that you bring it up, Sandra, I think it is a true. True trait. It's really rare for me to blush. If you saw it, I must have been very, very embarrassed. <laughs> I right. don't think I've ever seen you blush. But anyhow, great yes. to have you back. Thank um, you. You just have so much to discuss, and I think you, you've I got know. a lot of great ideas, opinions. You're in the know on um, everything that's happening. Where do we start? Well, I think it would be fascinating to yeah. discuss your take on F8, which yeah. is Facebook's big annual yep. conference, yep. and you know, kind of your takeaways from that, because I think there was just a lot of information. I've seen a lot coming down my you know, social media yeah. feed about um, F8 and what that means in terms of changes for consumer usage of you know, uh, totally. regular things like our phones and yep. things like that. So tell us all about it. I've had a very long standing relationship with Afe. I mm -hmm. was at the very first one they did. Wow. Back in the day with Rock U mm -hmm. when they opened up their platform. So I've pretty much gone every single year after that, except maybe once or twice. So I've had a pretty long run seeing kind of the way that they've evolved the platform, the way that they've worked with developers. And it's been incredible to watch them grow, right? And to watch their product mm -hmm. lines grow and take on a, a sort of a life of their own, right. um, particularly with the acquisitions of, you know, WhatsApp and Instagram and continuing to build on sort of that promise of being that communications sort of platform and software, you know, in the world. Right. Right. Right, um, and connecting everyone in the right, world. Right, and surpassing mm -hmm. the numbers of Apple and Microsoft and Google and all these right. giants that you're like, holy cow, that was Facebook like 10 years ago, you know? My takeaway from F8 was, you know, from a... You know, event-wise, obviously, they do a phenomenal job. Um, they, they brought it down to San Jose, mm -hmm. which was interesting. And I, I at the same time, <laughs> I, I wasn't impressed, mm -hmm. right? So it was like the content also didn't fully impress me. They created an incredible narrative mm -hmm. and really good story, mm -hmm. right? So I think that Mark Zuckerberg has improved tremendously as a speaker as a storyteller and as like really driving that 10-year vision for the company now will in 10 years will we not have phones and will we not have tvs in our living room yeah that's, that kind, chance. Of, that's kind of the you stake know? that he was taking yeah, in the I, ground and right i disagree with that mm -hmm. you know and i've been i think pretty blunt about it and i disagree with my dear good friend and someone i i admire tremendously robert scoble like you know and and i think like we were talking before the show started, Sandra, I think there's a niche, right? And there will be always a niche for VR and AR. But I think that people at the core, which is interesting, right? Even for, with everything that social media has done to us, which is keep us more connected. It's also created us to be more distant, mm -hmm. right? In this weird, ironic way. Right. So we're super close. And but does that VR vision even take us more distant? <laughs> I think it does because, you know, you're not necessarily, even when you're in 
even when you're in a VR environment, you're not interacting with each other, with each other physically, right? right? right. You're in this other, you know, reality and you're not really yourself. Right. right? And, and just and to so- take a step back, that's really what Mark Zuckerberg really came out with is that he predicted that phones were going to go away, yep. that everyone was going to be in, interacting in yep. a VR environment. Yep. Um, so, so that's really the crux of the event. Right. And I think that, you know, we've seen what, what happened with Google Glass. Mm-hmm. You've seen what happened with Snapchat Spectacles. Right. I think you've seen a lot of different types of technologies that are intrusive, right, on our person. Right. right that we have to wear on our person that... That's not necessarily how people want to engage with technology. The beauty about the phone and about the iPhone, right, when it first came out was that we had this window, right, into the world and to doing all these different things and discovering new things and being really connected, but that it was intrusive. It, we could take it out when we wanted. We could carry it. We could put it on our person. We could listen to music. Like, we right. could do all of these things, right? Right. It was Share your photos, personal handheld but computer. It was your com- it's, it, and it still yes. will continue to be right now do i see you know the marketplace that has been built and creative of of millions and millions of people that have phones and lucrative businesses like samsung and lg and apple just being like oh yeah we're getting rid of our phone lines and all y'all are now gonna wear our glasses like no Let's right. be honest. It's just right. not going to happen. There'll be a niche for that, just like there will be a niche for VR headsets, you know, and augmented reality. And for very particular use cases, I think it's an incredible technology that's going to help us in different different aspects of our lives, right? So for, you know, um, health, right? Education. And education, mm-hmm. being able to do better things in the enterprise and product-like related right. things. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we're going to see incredible advancement for those things for that technology but that it'll be like an every single day thing where we don't even have a tv and there are just multiple screens everywhere and like it's chaos (laughs) like you know i think about walking down the street with some glasses that i'm like shooting off like six different you know screens and being like oh i see that my friends are calling me and they're in you know spaces and oh here's you know the latest horoscope and the weather and And plus it reading your mind and sending out emails (laughs) like we already (laughs) have a ridiculous amount of information pushed at us consistently Mm -hmm. but we can control when we want that app to give us, you know, and I think we'll still have that with the glasses to a point, but I don't know that, you know, some people also, it's like a fashion thing. You don't, you don't, you may not want to wear glasses, you know, you may not want to wear the contacts because it bothers you. So I think you're going to see people have a choice. And I think maybe having said people will have that choice and we'll see what the market plays out in these next 10 years, but it's still really early. And I think placing heavy bets, is risky, but mm-hmm. not risky for Facebook because they can say whatever they want. And, you know, 10 years later, who's going to be like, oh, Mark, you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think so. But 20 years ago, Microsoft is doing similar things, right? Yeah. They're trying to get web TV to work yep. and all these other things. Yep. Amazon's trying to figure out how to sell books. 100%. You know, there's still an Amazon model. It's replaced a lot of brick and mortar yeah. things, but it didn't go where Jeff Bezos thought it was going to go. No. And, you know, interestingly enough that you bring on Amazon, I think they're probably one of the most interesting companies out on the web today, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're creating completely new ways for people to shop and they're bringing back the retail store and even bookstores, but in a much different way. So they're kind of rethinking the whole business around um, retail, right? And so I think that they've, they've got so many different businesses like who would have thought that amazon then is going to start producing shows right and competing right. with netflix right, right right and then who would have thought that amazon is also going to be you know doing this they they, they host probably most of the world's biggest companies right, right with their cloud services exactly right and then they've got like this crazy logistics company mm-hmm. right and shopping and that the, not that's only bigger that, than, the, the no, robotics that are involved than in that. walmart right. like and target and like all of the e-commerce put together like amazon owns more of that percentage than any of those companies. Right. Mm-hmm. So you look at somebody like Amazon who kind of stays chill in the background and they're not like, oh, we're making glasses next week, you know, like, and they're just doing really interesting things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent 
you know, in line with some of their practices with employees and things like that. But From that's an automation the case. standpoint, we're yeah. moving in that direction, right? So. It's hard to be great at employee things, especially Absolutely. when you're growing that fast in so many other facets. Yep. Amazon creating content. I mean, they're a bookstore. Now they create content and they yeah. do all these other things. Yeah. Apple's rumored to be looking at acquiring all of Disney for two hundred fifty billion dollars and that. probably wow. higher. Wow. Yep. So Apple's recognizing that maybe the phone is reaching end of life, or maybe Absolutely. you want to have our phone type service in yeah. ten years is going to have Apple specific content that you can buy into a subscription, or we can offer via our Apple Glass or 100%. whatever. hundred percent. And I think that Apple, if there's anybody that's Poised to merge content and you know devices and all that stuff. I think that that's going to be they're going to probably be the ones that are able to do that the best, just mm-hmm. because they've had that sort of ecosystem in place, right? Right, and have built it. I mean, you know, Steve Jobs did. And, you know, he was the CEO of Pixar, right? As right. well, right? Yeah, so exactly. he's had the relationship with Disney for years, and if there was anybody that was going to be able to buy Disney. Apple has the money to do it. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't need that much to be able to make that happen. Mm-hmm. And Disney's a behemoth when it comes to content. I mean, they have ABC. Oh, yeah. They've got video distribution. and pro- I mean, it's, it's crazy how All much All the licensing they have. rights. Yeah. 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 It's huge. Nuts. It's huge. Well, I think it's funny... Before you had actually mentioned, you know, some of the, you know, very, very well known tech influencers yeah. um, jumping on the bandwagon of VR and glasses and spectacles. And I just remember, you know, how Robert Scoble, he was very early pioneer jumping on the bandwagon of spectacles and um, not Google spectacles, Glass. but Google Glass. Yeah. Right. And 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 then you kind of mentioned like it's a fashion, uh, you know, I, yeah. accessory as yeah. well. And yeah. I think that the fact that the geeks glommed on to it so early on turned a lot of people off not to mention all the backlash that yeah. um, Google Glass got later on you know in places like San Francisco with 100%. getting people wearing them well, and getting beat up let's just be honest right like you know Google for what it's worth right is is not a consumer company they're a technology company to save their lives they probably couldn't market correctly those glasses is either, right, right? Oh, so, that, so true so it was so you true. know from a marketer standpoint I would have never launched the way that they did that product, mm-hmm. right? I think they've done a tremendous job with Pixel mm-hmm. with their phone, but that's more in their DNA than I would say something that's going to be intrusive to your face and forgetting about the other half of the population, which are women that would never want to wear those ridiculous, ugly things. Right. So. And so what <laughs> happened with and what happened with Spectacles anyway? That was just such a huge launch, so much so, hype, so huge for them. And I have not seen one person in the street. Nobody wear wears them. They'll take pictures with them, like mm-hmm. selfies, and maybe bust them out for like a, you know, geek conference. I did see them a lot at South by Southwest. Did you? Okay. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's South by Southwest, where of course, you and would it's think acceptable it's a, to wear them exactly, there. Exactly. <laughs> but have you seen any Coachella pictures with people with their spectacles? No. No. So that should tell you something, right? And and the funny thing is that Facebook pulls out and does stories, mm-hmm. right? And now they've surpassed with Instagram. They've surpassed the use case of what Snapchat has been able to do. So that just tells you the power of the platform. Right. Right. And the power that you turn on that feature, but you have that user base. They'll go back to using it. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy how Snapchat, like people aren't using it that much. As, as I was surprised. To. I thought I it would, too. I thought it would still be, you know, in mode, in fashion. I kind of wanted to pair. Right. <laughs> I know. No, I, I didn't even bother. <laughs> Is it that they're, they're too much of a one trick pony? I mean, it's, it's fun. And then at some point, what's next? I mean, everybody else is taking pictures and you can I put mean, them other places. Or? Again, I just think, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a practicality thing, right? You know, it's not like they're my beautiful Tom Ford glasses. Right. They're these plastic, like young looking things that look cheap and I'm not going to put them on my face. <laughs> You know, when the phone does the same thing, like I, that's just me, though. Right. Right. But right. even with the youths, I've spoken with the youths. <laughs> you spoke I love the you, youths. You talk to the millennials. I do. Like they're not sporting them. Mm-hmm. It's, and also, we were talking about. It's not like the millennials are clamoring down our door, being like, "Give me my VR headset. Right. I want my content." Like, you know, they're not. They're not there. There's no research saying like. Oh my God! You know the, the the public is ready for this. They've been waiting for it. Yeah. Right. They're so excited. They all want to be in VR and AR and discover new ways to like entertain themselves. Right. It's still the geeks. Like look at three D cinema. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Right. 3D glasses in cinema, like yeah. there's a niche for that, but mm-hmm. not everybody wants to go to the to the movies and watch in 3D. Right. And things like gaming, where you might see the VR thing come into come into play, you've got people in a room; they're not in a public setting exactly. where someone else can get excited about it. Right. With them. And notice the commercials for VR hmm. and like gear and stuff. Have you noticed that none of them? You don't really see them inside of their worlds. Mm-hmm. You see them all like having it on, and yes. then like. People watching them, right. having the experience, which I think is hilarious because it's not like you're actually watching like what they're experiencing inside, right. but you're watching other people like watch them, which I think is like a really funny way to market it. Right. Yeah, it is funny. You know, speaking a little bit more about some of the marketing, the scandalous marketing campaigns that we've seen recently. Know, Let's talk right? about those. What is so happening? So it's been to like one brand. after another. The brand what is happening just. To them? What has happened? I don't know. They're not know thinking. Who is up on top? They're like, not thinking that Pepsi companies. commercial. Oh my God! Don't get me started. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. I honestly well, don't know anything about it. Uh, so yeah, Kendall yeah. Jenner. Well, basically, so it's a it's a protest, and it's sort of in the style of a Black Lives protest or uh-huh. march. And yeah. you know, you've got this line of police, and you know, everyone's unfriendly. There's a group of young people, and then you see, you know, Kendall. She's in a fashion shoot, and she sees it happening from afar, and she sort of comes in and to save the day right and she just you know goes through the the crowd (laughs) sways through the crowd and then hands a pepsi to the police officer right and then he smiles and you know it's like she kind of like all of a sudden saved the day and (laughs) well the thing was that there was a um during the black lives matter march there was a i believe it was an ap that's right that that photo yeah photo that of this young black girl who stands in front of the police and she's wearing this dress and it became kind of a very historical photograph and moment iconic yeah Mm -hmm. very iconic Mm -hmm. and she was essentially you know creating that same moment but for for a pepsi yeah right, right? during a, and so it just became they like hijacked super it super tone deaf they had no idea what was happening and then we just had this whole you know awful issue with united and wells fargo and the memes have been outrageous i mean quite frankly they've been quite humorous yeah of and course so that's why memes that's are been great really enjoyable <laughs> but you know from from the top you know of the the faux pas and just the complete lack of awareness for some of these companies and that's one of the things that i rant about sandra yes i love the, your rants the the fact that marketing is like should be fully and completely like brand aware and customer centric Mm -hmm. and just always know that you're a living breathing thing like you have a persona now like you're like a person Mm -hmm. so because of social brands have become personified to a point right and so they get taken down they they get beat up they 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 are judged and so if you want to be on good terms with your public and your customers you have to be in touch with what's actually happening culturally Right. And what's actually happening in pop culture. Right. Right. Because it's not just about like government and news and this and that, but also like politics. And, right. Right. You know, fashion and all of these things that a lot of companies are very tone deaf to. Right. Well, they I think it's a lot. Uh, you know, uh, our friend Brian Solis actually talks yeah. about this a lot with the customer experience yep. in X and how your brand doesn't stop at the video the the commercial that you did on tv or the ads that you're displaying on facebook it's really about the whole experience beginning to end of that interaction the customer interaction with the brand from the beginning he talks about virgin quite a bit and i think we all love we all loved virgin Virgin, loved virgin loved you're right loved virgin Um, you know they have a red carpet to greet you when you're coming in and it's just this end-to-end experience that just feels makes you feel like a vip it always makes you feel like a vip Mm -hmm. i mean i've i'm a brand loyalist right and i'm very like i'm just like that Mm -hmm. so for me you know when pepsi did this whole thing i was like of course they did because i'm a total coke loyalist and i've been since i was a child same Uh with when virgin you know came out in the scene like I started flying them immediately mm-hmm. and I would not fly anything else domestically mm-hmm. and the minute you would put me on another flight to, because you know for international sometimes I would have to fly American or Air France or whatever like some of the international ones are, are better sure. but man like if when I ever had to fly United I would 
like cry and go kicking and screaming because they are just awful customer service. What does someone like United do? I mean, because I know I nothing. I avoid <laughs> I avoid their brand yes. like crazy. Every, a lot of people do. This is way before they beat up a guy and took him off the airplane. Exactly. I think the I think the issue has been with United is that they they have this reputation for being like this cold kind of just very greedy and not like very tone deaf non-aware type of brand that is right. not customer centric it's just about let's haul them like cattle mm-hmm. unless you're in like that vip fly high on my club where they roll a blue carpet out for you right. right but other than that if you're just a regular customer that's flying economy and you're you know trying to get to point a from point b you're just treated as worse than cattle to be honest yeah. with you yeah. and they don't care i mean i've i i've actually had uh, United um, people make me cry. And what? I mean, that's me. I don't cry like right. easily. I'm, that's I'm horrible. kind of a bitch. Sometimes. Vanessa doesn't cry. She doesn't I blush. You're tough. I, don't I know. Blush. I wouldn't want to get in a Heck confrontation no, with you. Not with you. Latina tech realness. <laughs> 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 but, that, but they made me cry. That's and horrible. I was just like, I couldn't, be- it was like talking to a wall, you know, just talking to someone that just was like super demeaning and just totally non helpful. Right. Like not helpful at all. Oh. And I think that or the, kind, the right? thing about mm. it is that that stuff really does. It is a cultural issue. It stems it from the top. It's kind of like what we were talking about, Uber. Exactly. Right? Oh, don't get me started. And don't get you started. All of that stuff trickles down to, you know, and everyone that is an employee sees the way their CEO interacts, treats people, what the culture is like internally. They take their marching orders from that. Yeah. And I mean, Uber is, is, is just taking a, a big falling are they are they in trouble i mean you know a lot of these companies are fragile they they rock it up and they're hugely successful but that success is i mean twitter is a fragile company as well at least in my opinion twitter's getting a lot of backlash right now for supporting you know a lot of the things that trump is doing and some of the hashtags and continuing Mm. to support that Mm -hmm. kind of but it's like what where do they where would where does twitter fall in when it's really like the free speech like i guess it's like the free speech versus hate speech how do you define that right they've well twitter let's be honest they've never been helpful in any way shape or form in protecting people from trolls and bullies and harassment online you've seen what's happened with gamergate you've seen what's happened right, with that's true. many people and celebrities and women out there who right. have had to suffer the wrath of the twitter trolls and i think that that just speaks volumes of even even just the culture right like even you can police a community is trump a, tw- a right? twitter troll <laughs> oh my god, I, he's worse than that. Don't get me started on him. Someone like Uber that's struggling on several fronts, you know, yeah. coding practices and all these yeah. things that they do that that damage their brand. I mean, I, I now and I, and I'm not brand loyal. I, I'm looking for a deal, but I also look for how you treat people. Um, I'm not big on the gig economy because I think a company like Uber, Lyft. Task grab all those. Yeah. I, I think they exploit the people with the gig, quote unquote gig. I and, agree. And get rich off of. Uh, the, there's no. There's no task rabbit anywhere in the task rabbit world that has an equity share. No. But there isn't. Mm-hmm. everybody who works upside and gets free lunch and and does the task rabbit thing benefits tremendously. Yep. Off the of sweat and hard work. Somebody else. Yep. Uber is the same problem. So even if you aren't sexually harassing people and you aren't doing customer inappropriate things with their data and their yeah. coding and your access to their machine you're also getting rich off of people you're you're robber barons in a modern day sense you are and i think it's it's a it's an interesting dichotomy because at the same time they are generating job opportunities for other people that's right? true so it's like it's one of those weird like you know dynamics in the sense of People want to work for them. It gives them certain opportunities. It gives them flexibility with some of the jobs they do. It can be an additional second income for right. people who are struggling, particularly people who live in metropolitan cities that it's very expensive to make ends meet if you're, yeah. say, just a bartender. Sure. You know? And so I think that even even people, I was reading some crazy story today about, I don't know if it's a Twitter engineer or some engineer at some um, electronic company or tech company that makes $160,000 a year and is 
struggling in San Francisco. <laughs> like, and I believe that. Like, I, believe I, I actually too. believe it. Like, believe. like they're they're struggling to make ends meet. And so, and when you think about, hey, this is Pete A. Turner, and this is Sandra Ponce de Leon from Popping the Bubble. We love making this show for you and giving these incredible interviews. Absolutely, we meet the greatest people. We'd love for your support by going to iTunes and subscribing, and maybe even leaving us a five star review. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Right, the disparity between the amount of millionaires and billionaires that live in this area, I know, you know, compared to other parts of the population in the country, it's staggering. It's mm. like mind boggling. Yes. Right. And so I think that these companies, if they were to behave better, if they were to find a better economics model that could really help some of these people have benefits and other things of that nature, right? Yeah. Like we'd probably have a different perspective about this gig economy right right what advice would you give travis i gave him advice a long time ago and i wrote yeah i wrote a blog post about this several years ago Mm -hmm. when they were having their initial drama and misbehavior and i was like just start leading with with doing the right thing like Mm -hmm. just like lead by doing the right thing for the people around you and set and be an example like set an example that's not just about growth and just about at whatever means it takes like not to be that kind of leader but to be judicious and to be thoughtful and to be compassionate right Mm -hmm. and so I think that those are just things that are not in his DNA I just think that he has been an executive that and I mean the New York Times Mike Isaac just wrote this incredible piece about him and just the company Mm. and he really breaks it down to this is the this is who he is like his first company his second company it's all about whatever it takes to win winner takes all Mm -hmm. and that means like you don't care about you have to be ruthless you have you don't care about ethics you don't care about how people are treated you don't care what rules you have to break right you just don't have you don't have any respect for authority or or having a good business like ethics. acumen and ethics <laughs> yeah. right like and to me that trickled down to the entire company mm-hmm. and as much as people that work there want to protect the company and say these are lies and you know th- there's a lot of people that talk and reporting and reporters get a lot of background i know because i'm in the business of pr as well and you would be amazed how much people will talk Without oh, yeah. being the source, mm-hmm. and they will tell them everything and the, paint the picture and tell the right the truth, actually, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you know, I, I I do think that as much as there's fake news, quote unquote, with some of these reporters that things that keep coming up and situations that are continue to be exposed with Uber, they're pretty much on the right on the ball, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and then if it's not true, where are the stories on the other end of the spectrum where there is ethical behavior and you know, there is a crackdown and there are penalties for people that sexually harass employees that are under them. Leaving the company with, with money is, is not necessarily penalizing that right. kind of behavior. So there is, there may be some fake news and there may be some inflation of those things, but there's without a doubt, if you have a winner take all at all costs kind of strategy, that also makes you a desperate company and, and not a well-founded company. Corporate social responsibility is expensive. It's when it starts expensive. to get blown up in your yeah. face. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I mean, you've seen all the departures of executives from the company. Sure. You've seen Google has all the, a all the huge, PR crisis PR that they have to. They're being sued left and right. They're being sued by in. Waymo, mm-hmm. you know, for, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like it's one thing after the other. Like their head of homes like left. She's right. like, I'm done with the drama. I, I would have been done with the drama like years ago. <laughs> I would have been like, I mean, out. <laughs> they, they need some urgent crisis right sort of let's turn this whole boat around and how do we do it how can we do it how do they do it i think the first thing is is start from the bottom right like really start with their drivers see i was going to say start from the top well i mean i think (laughs) well i mean that's a given right right i i I actually been of the mind that he should be fully replaced as ceo kind of seems like it i really do i I think but he that's never going to happen i don't think because he owns like most of the company and has the most voting rights on the board but it, could there be an oust? 
probably really difficult just because he does have majority stake in the company still. For I mean, for the bottom is that if they really started treating their drivers right, and if they really started to show compassion mm-hmm. for them and giving them the right perks and figuring out the right way to do this, right, and, and hiring more women at the top, mm-hmm. right, and, and taking care of all of the different issues that have come up and, and publicly, like, just being consistent like the consistency has to be there reaching milestones talking about the problems they've had like i think being transparent and just saying like we we effed up right the i feel like travis is hides is kind of like still hiding he hides behind you know ariana huffington he hides behind you know some of these other investors he hides behind executives that he says he's going to bring on board like a coo it's like take ownership right right you know that short mea culpa he did for a few seconds to his employees Give me a break. Mm-hmm. You so know? it's not enough. It's not believable. I don't think it's believable. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it for a minute. So so switching gears for a sec, I mean, who is doing it right? Who's Who who do you admire in the startup world or otherwise other brands that you think are just really kicking ass? That's such a good question. It's hard to say because every company has their fair number of issues mm-hmm. and they're all imperfect in one way or another. Mm. I don't. I don't really feel, I I don't feel as compelled with technology right now. Hmm. I I don't feel as... Are you burnt out? Are you saying you're burnt out? I'm not burned out at all. Absolutely not burnt out. I I just don't feel that the things we're talking about, the, the ways that we're trying to solve problems you know, the focus that we have on tech right now, like being mind controlled and all VR and all this stuff. Like, I just feel like I wish we could be having a different conversation that's more about consciousness and mindfulness Mm -hmm. and like being people who are doing technology to do more good than just like have so much more money and go IPO and be a unicorn. And if you're one more company saying that they're a unicorn, I will shoot myself. (laughs) Okay, because it's like, so when you ask me like, what company do I think is really doing that great right now that doesn't have a bad sort of past and thing. Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say Netflix right now. I'm excited about what they're doing. I've seen them turn it around from taking down Blockbuster and taking, you know, right. the CDs to the next level to becoming digital. Like they've just hit every mark along the way and been able to take the company to that next level. And I think from a content side that I'm, I guess the thing is I'm much more excited about the content business and what's happening with media and entertainment than I am with what's happening with technology. Mm, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So I think that for me, it's more about seeing the stuff that I've been talking about for years now with how important content is and seeing video and the technology around video and around what we are going to be able to do with those mediums and storytelling and narrative and all of that. That's what excites me. But as far as like, tech of like VR and AR and we're going to have these things and chips in our heads and like I just don't want that kind of intrusive technology mm-hmm. you know I, yeah. I really care more about what good can we be doing with with it and, and especially also as, as a parent now yeah you know? yeah yeah we were talking about yeah. that I think yeah. that that really changes your worldview in terms 100%. of you know what is important to, to leave there's a lot it's I think it's just so funny because it's it reminds me of that Silicon Valley episode where it's there on the tech crunch um, yes uh, stage and everyone that was such a talking real about experience for talking me, about how they're too. what they're what they're their technology is going to change the world for yeah. the better or we're going to make the world a better place. Yeah. And everyone had the same catchphrase, the same yeah. line. And it's true. You see a lot of companies that are delivering your dry cleaning to you through a mobile app. But, you know, who's actually right. doing something for, you know, real problems, solving exactly. real problems that our world needs to definitely yeah. address. And we're always really good, you know, to point out the bad Mm -hmm. You know, I think media just goes and has a field day with the struggles, Mm -hmm. but we rarely really hear about the positive. Mm -hmm. And I think with everything that's been happening um, politically and everything that's happening in the rest of the world, I think we need more uplifting stories. We need people in our lives and, and to shine the light on people that are doing really like good things, you know, whether it's in their communities or by helping others or corporate social responsibility. And, you know, it sounds very kumbaya, but I think that there needs to be a balance because everything's been feeling so doom and gloom and like hell is about to, you know, <laughs> like. Uh, but isn't that how it is, though? I mean, when a news company wants to make money, 
um, that we all we've talked about a Kardashian in this show yeah. uh, or a Jenner in this case, yeah. but not any Nobel Prize winners, not any Pulitzer Prize winners, not people that do things because our attention is drawn to things like what's Donald Trump done now? Because yeah. that sells Cadillacs. That's conditioned. That's a conditioned yeah. behavior, I feel, though, that yeah. we've been conditioned to look for that as yeah. a form of entertainment, as a form of conversation, discussion, of debate. I think that's a conditioned behavior. The same way that we'll have to be conditioned, and I think, which is really funny how we're getting pushed into VR, not by, like, our peers, yeah. but by, like, corporate companies, mm-hmm. right? By corporations. We're being right. pushed to be, like, your mind will be better. You'll be more... I mean, Elon Musk, I know you're doing amazing things with Tesla and other things, but come on now, son. Like, <laughs> get it together. Like, I do not want to give my innermost thoughts and the things that I think about or how much I mess up before I'm going to start an email or writing. You don't want like, your don't eye want tracking data. while you're reading? Oh, girl, or your please. Phone? No, no, I don't. Then you so, can get better advertising served at you. I know that. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I mean, yes, this is true. Mm-hmm. And that I'm not super opposed to, but I would much rather have the choice of say, you know, telling my browser, hey, you know what, I'm down with getting ads for, you know, 75% off at Barney's Warehouse or, you know, like, give me the stuff I want. Not right. just like track my brain and my, like, you know, there's ways that they could, like, it's so funny when I think about like, why don't you just ask us? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like yeah. you could have just set your browser and been like, these are the kinds of ads I would like to get because, you know, you're looking for a home or you're looking to buy a car. Or, like they could have saved a lot of time and energy by just being like, hey, people who's going to open your browser, like start targeting us and then it'd be a really competitive, like you know, marketplace. Right. But no, instead they do these like SEO and like, let's do digital, you know, and let's like do programmatic and native ads to see like what gets closer. And I mean, it's just hilarious instead of yeah, just heaven being forbid more direct. You, you shop for a purse online and you're a dude. Like I cannot, oh my God. I cannot get purses off <laughs> no, my screen now. No, it's crazy. That's I started funny. looking cause I'm in the, I'm in the market to um, trade in my car this year. Cause I lease my car. Oh, man. Right. And so I, I went to a couple of, you know, Kelly blue book and this other one just to look at a few different models that I'm looking at. Guess what I get all non-stop. day yeah. long. Like non stop. I'm like, y'all know, like you don't even know like my really situation, right? Like of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. But it's just hilarious. And they're re they're retargeting, retargeting me that's like yeah. doesn't make any sense. I don't want to be retargeted by the same brands. I want you to give me a deal. Or yeah. even once you buy something, then you get retargeted again. It's right. like, I just purchased it. I, yeah. or I, just, one. I just went and bought that. Exactly. It was just at the site. I bought it. Like, right. now, why are you sending me another ad for it now? Right. It drives me crazy. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So we still got a long way to go with ads, too. But it would be so much easier if, if, if like, you know, um, uh, like if I had the ability to, to do what I do with Flipboard, where mm-hmm. I create my own magazine. And I'm like, oh, I'll take these kinds of ads from you, Flipboard. Right. You actually use Flipboard. I do. I, 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 it annoys me. So I turn it Really? Around. Why yeah. does it annoy you? It's, it, I don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. It, does, it brings no value to me. You mean like when you're... So you're finding like, like enough news and enough... Whatever uh, I want what to you get. Need really? From, from yeah. Facebook. And when, honestly, I try to avoid the news because... I don't right. want the negativity. I, I don't want to be sold a Cadillac because Donald Trump is crazy. Like, I get it. That's Donald Trump's true. crazy. But right. I, so I, 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 things that interest me, and I, I look for certain things, and I know where to find them, and, yeah. and I don't need them brought to me because then it's not filtered the way. I, I want to filter it myself. Mm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I do, you know, I, I've, I, I feel like like it because it's a magazine Okay. Where I can see, you know, I, I have a lot of interests, so right. I like to follow architecture and travel. And, and sometimes I don't have the time to go through a whole bunch of sites to see my architecture articles or know mm-hmm. what's happening in fashion or food or things sure. that I'm interested in. So, I mean, I'm consumed by tech all day. And for right. me, Flipboard is nice because I feel like I'm just like, oh, I'm getting to read a cool magazine. That's not like my stuff isn't really tech focused on okay. Flipboard. Uh-huh. Right. Whereas, you know, my Facebook news feed, for example, is all tech. Right. Right. And politics. And it's like, oh, gosh, oh you know? God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. So, yeah. Do you have any heroes or role models? Well, the cliche answer is my mother, your right? Mama. Everybody says and my mother. And your mom, but your mama is like, she's impressive. I've, yes. I've heard a little bit about her yes. and she's my really mom amazing. Is very amazing. Mm-hmm. She's an incredibly strong women, woman. Um, and I also uh, very much admire 
uh, my younger sister, mm. actually, too. Mm-hmm. My, my siblings. Tell us, tell us about your mom and your sister. Uh, well, they're fearless, you mm-hmm. know, very decisive women. That's they, where you got it. That's where I've got it. Mm-hmm. And my sister's younger, but my mom, you know, um, she's an entrepreneur on her, you know, on her own. And she's done a ton of different things. She's always wanting, she's always learning. Mm-hmm. She's always challenging herself. Mm-hmm. You know, she always has stories and, you know, different interests. And I think that's where I've just learn to be that way you know I grew up with someone that was very just very much a perfectionist is there is there something (laughs) that she tells you that she told you that you're now telling to your daughter on a regular basis yeah I mean one I think it's that um I love her yeah (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. all the time and uh I always tell her that she's smart and strong Mm -hmm. you know that's something my mom would always tell me that I'm I'm strong I can do anything Mm -hmm. you know I I can do anything I I I set my mind to Mm -hmm. and my mom would always say you know to be like to always be a good person and to be honest Mm -hmm. like to be an honest like and to do the right thing, like do the, like think through things and do the right thing, like do right by others. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I've always carried through my entire career and through the people that I meet and, and, and how I want to respect them and have, you know, have, have them think of me. Right. Like I think it's important. And my mom always, you know, I grew up in a household where she wasn't a gossipy woman. You know, we, we didn't have that kind of dynamic. Like Mm -hmm. there wasn't, any kind of negativity about others, you know, or thinking bad about people. Right. And so I think that for me is something that as I grew up and went to school and, and, and the workplace, when I started seeing how people can be, you know, yeah. it, it, it's a really a letdown. And so, you know, my mom always says, Se ve en la cara, pero no los corazones. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So you can see people's face, but not their hearts. Right. Right. right? Yes, and I like to say, yo soy quince tortugas. <laughs> Do you know what that means, Pete? <laughs> yeah, it means I'd like a milkshake. No, I know. I know what it means. It's supposed to be funny because it makes no sense. No, it but, but it is funny. Those kind of things mm-hmm. that your parents give you that are these lessons that yeah. generationally get passed down, it seems like we are rocketing ahead so fast. Absolutely. We're trying as hard as we can to forget everything that brings wisdom into our lives. You know, yeah. like, like, look, we all, it just drives me crazy, but we learned this a long time ago. Excessive drinking in the workplace is a bad idea. Go to any startup and there's booze everywhere. And, and that leads to problems. Always. I blame it on Mad Men. <laughs> That's fine. I blame it on the resurgence of Mad Men. But you are right. Like every uh, company... Uh, every startup and even lo- a lot of big companies and New York agencies I've been to, they have full on bars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they have kegs, they have like the whole bit, you know, um, fridges full of wine. Right. It's, it's a very in thing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, cocktail bar, like cocktail carts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So alcohol carts that they push around and make you drinks on Fridays and things like that. So it, it does push a, a, a behavior um, that but can that's lead been to part a lot of, the, of liability. The culture for a long time. I mean, it even has from been. the first it dot com, been. we had a we had a woman that rolled around in a shopping cart with like that was full of beer, yep. and we were just able to select from our desks what we wanted. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, it, and I mean, you and all the industry parties were very much mm-hmm. champagne flowing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. champagne campaign. And it's fun until people start having behaving badly or, yeah, <laughs> or controlling their urges or whatever it's going to be it's very true so what are some of these wisdoms that that you feel like we're starting because you know this industry yes you've seen the lessons and like well, i don't know we seem to be losing touch with this it, i think you know. we're losing touch with just uh respect just being a good person you know and um and i also think we're losing touch with just sometimes our own inflation of our egos Mm, mm -hmm. right where sometimes people around here like they forget like nobody gives a hoot about you you know in in podunk arkansas or in paris france or in lima peru like nobody knows you or nobody cares like there's a whole other world that exists outside of your bubble which is why they call silicon valley the bubble and i think that that's that's a big thing where there's very Mm. 
there's a lot of narcissists running around in this town and they treat people badly. I've just seen a lot of different situations that have come up over, you know, the last couple of years where people um, demonstrate really bad behavior mm -hmm. and they do terrible things to others. And it just gets kept sort of gets pushed under the rug that's just swope and, you know, swept you know aside swept aside mm -hmm. because they know someone else or they're a friend of someone and so you can see that that bad behavior continue to just keep on going and then later on somebody you know kind of fc over and they're like oh i could i didn't know and then everybody p comes out of the war work to be like oh no no but they did this to me too and did you know and then all of a sudden all the whispers <laughs> come out when instead of just being you know doing the right thing and just kind of outing a person you can't do that because then your reputation is also on the line and that kind of thing so i think that there's a lot of that here where you know whether it's investors that have behaved badly and beat their wives and do terrible Ugh. things or business partners that screw you over and you can't say anything about it or you know like just terrible things right mm -hmm. that people do or behave bad, or people that don't pay you yep. know their vendors or and don't pay, like you know that screw you over or you know like it's just crazy and and it's and it's sad right yes. that that respect for people's livelihoods for people's your character like they don't have self-respect in that way and i think that's something that i've seen over the years increase Mm -hmm. A lot more than I did, you know, from back in the day of good old tech days that we talk about and reminisce about sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the new people that have come into the scene, it's like they have something to prove. And they're social climbers and they're, you know, and you're just like, what, what, what's happening? There's one thing to want to help people, but there's another th where you're getting taken advantage of. Right. And I think that's where, um, you know, you have to call call some people out and just say this is not it's not OK. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to protect yourself. You do. Mm -hmm. You do. And it's a small town. That's very true. It is a very it's a small very town. small town. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, no mm -hmm. matter if I'm in L.A., no matter if I'm here, no matter if I'm in New York, you know, it's funny how we all seem to know each other from all, you know, that if you're in tech and you've been in it for a long time, you will know your, your, your people from coast to coast, you know? And I think that's one of the things that I love about it, but also one thing that's just like also hard yeah about it yeah right yeah well you definitely have to um yeah be wise about the way that you're behaving and know that Always. things will come back to bite you if you're misbehaving they do <laughs> And you just, you know, at the end of the day, like my mom always says, it's like, you just leave it to karma. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You can't, you can't wish anything bad upon anyone and you just have to let it be and take the high road. Always take the high road. Yeah. That's good. Good advice. That's yeah. a great wisdom right there. You Absolutely. do. You always just have to take the high road in situations that are hard sometimes because you, you really only have that one moment and that one chance, you know, whether you walk away with your dignity yep. or you just fall to a lower yeah. you know crappy bottom of the, the that pool of grossness you know that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you just don't want to be in that you don't things, want to you, that murky lurky crap you don't want that you don't right. want to be things, that affronts offenses all these things yeah you know at some point you have to say the ship has sailed or the water has gone under the bridge yeah. and i don't want to be hanging on to a boat that's left already that's you know exactly i don't right. want to be in the water going under the bridge yep i wanted to you know that sucked yep and over there is where I'm going. That's the past. Yeah. Move on to the next yeah. thing. Be yeah. a little wiser. Be a little kinder. Always. Mm -hmm. I think those looks exactly right. Always be wiser. It'll try to be wiser and kinder and learn from every experience for what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. That's my word of wisdom for the I day. I love it. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, no. I do too. <laughs> yeah. On that note, which is an excellent piece of advice for all of us and all of our listeners, um, yes. thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. I always have so much fun talking to you two. It's awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. just you're a natural, and you have a great radio voice, I have oh, to say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was hoping maybe I could have, you know, a second career. You should it's have. It's very huh? possible. Maybe like a, mm -hmm. um, you know, I reinvent myself. Yeah. To I, like you know, I like new, it. You <laughs> know, new kind of uh, new persona. And improved. New and improved persona. Vanessa, under her own new management. Right? A new, a new <laughs> brand. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, my God. Awesome. Well, thank you well, both for yeah, having me. Yeah, yeah. So really but if we, it. if people want to find you, you've got, you're running you a, um, a marketing anywhere. agency. Any yes. context? You Tell us about that. You can find me on anycontext.com. I'm Vanessa Camones on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. 
Um, I do right now kind of everything, really high-end consulting, marketing. So imagine you are looking for a VP of marketing to come in and help you figure out, you know, what you need. Mm -hmm. Whether it's sourcing agencies, we're looking at your content strategy, what are you doing with digital and social, and we can come in and help at a very high level, organize and figure out what your team's doing right, what you're not doing right, where you can find and solve problems more efficiently, effectively, and cheaper. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, we'll definitely put links to any context. And thanks again. It's been a great conversation. Yes. Thanks for having me. And you are my co host, Sandra Ponce de Leon. How do we find you on social? Oh, me? Yeah. (laughs) Moi? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Um, Well, I'm on Twitter, and my handle is Sandramp. In fact, I try to get that handle everywhere I can. On LinkedIn, Sandra Ponce de Leon. So I'll be contributing articles to Latina Geeks, uh, trying to get all of the dots connected here. So, you know, it's a lot of of fun, a lot of great opportunities on the horizon. You are blowing up. Blowing up, girl. I'm not quite there, but yes. Thank you. (laughs) What about you, Pete? Oh. You want to give your plug? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I almost forgot about me. Pete, come on now. I'm at Pete A. Turner on LinkedIn, on Twitter, all those places. PeteAturner.com is my website. I'm glad to help you with storytelling. I'm glad to help you get better at hiring veterans. I'm glad to help you with culture. Nobody knows more complex cultural things than me because I have been, I am alive because of my ability to withstand craziness in a crazy cultural situation. I love it. Yes. Yeah. So. Awesome. Hit me up, PeteAturner.com. 